Let's lift our hands a moment and bless the Lord. We thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I don't know, and uh, God is still going to come and give us the blessing over Passover. But as, as for this moment, the Lord says this to you. He said, though people have bad mouth, talked about, said things, and try to turn your thinking another direction, the Lord said, I've watched you for years, and I am going to give you a brand new tomorrow. You're going to see a tomorrow that you never thought was there. It's going to be a blessing upon your lives, and it'll be a blessing upon your family. It'll be a blessing upon you that you'll start walking in the gifts that he gave you to walk in. And you'll know those gifts as a brand new gift, says the Lord. So that's it. You have your hands up now. And the Lord said, that's for you. And it's coming to you and yours. And you are going to see it and it'll rise up from the midst of you and even from the inside of you because your tomorrow is new. Everything begins new, and I am going to show you a future and give you an expected end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and give the Lord a praise. <laughs> now, I don't, know who, I don't know who Ronald is. I don't know if Ronald is you or Ronald's done you some kind of wrong, but I know this. The Lord is going to make the wrong a right and right the wrong tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't know who that is, but you go ahead and take that if that's you. Praise God. I don't know who Ronald is, and I don't know if it's you or somebody's done something to you, but the Lord said that to me and wouldn't let me away from that. Yeah, who is Ronald? That's you? You Ronald? Oh, really? Well, you're the only one in this room raising their hand. Well, lift your hand up, brother. I heard the Lord say this concerning you. He said, the, right, the wrong that's been done you and things that needed to be righted is going to be righted. They're going to just start turning now. Now, I don't know exactly what a legal thing could be or what it may not be, but things are going to start moving your direction now from this point on. Because you were done wrong. And so the Lord, and whatever it is, you go ahead and receive it now. Because the Lord is going to make that thing right for you. Now you'll see it turn a little bit, then a little more, and then a little more, and then a little more, and then it'll just turn around. Hallelujah. But that's yours if you want it. You know, I remember, I remember telling a man one time, of course it wasn't this man, I was just, it's in another place altogether. And I went back there to him, and, and I, I called his name. As far as I could knew, know his name, then I didn't know he wouldn't answer, so I called his son's name. And he wouldn't answer. And I said, well, now. And then I called his son's name, and his son said, well, I, what did I keep saying? I kept saying something, uh, Garrett, 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 and your your dad's name is, what was his name? Uh, Roger? Yeah, Roger. And I said, and your, your name is Garrett, and your dad's name, Roger. And his dad wouldn't answer. See, this man answered. The, <laughs> his dad wouldn't answer. And so the boy finally stood up on the front row and said, well, that's it. My name's Garen, and my dad's name is Roger, and he's sitting right back there, and he won't answer. <laughs> And so, and so I said, the Lord says, you do a specialty job. You, you, your job is a specialty. You have a specialty thing you do. I said, that, is that true? No. I said, well, all right. He said, I said, you, you do a special, no. I said, well, then what is it you do? He said, well, I, I'm, I do this, I repair and do this work on pinball machines. <laughs> <laughs> he, 
He said, I've done it for, I don't know, 30 years. I said, and you don't think that's a specialty job? I said, how many people do you know that, you know, I'm thinking, I don't know anybody. But then he just looked at me and I said, well, all right then. I said, the Lord says this to you. Even though you wouldn't acknowledge it, I said, he's going to go ahead and give you a new job. You've done this 30 years. He's going to give you a brand new job with better perks, all this. It's going to happen. You'll know it within two weeks. Isn't that what I said? He just said, okay. He contacted his son, and out of the blue, another company came up to him, offered him a job, gave him a condo in Florida to stay in, did all this stuff for him. After 30 years of a specialty job, he suddenly moved into another place. You know, the Lord means what he says when he talks to people. And I'm not just going to stand up here and throw words around. And sometimes, you know, you can, I, I remember speaking one night, and I'm just walking along, and it just, it wouldn't leave me alone. I just turned around, and I said, who is Buck? <laughs> I mean, just, and it used to work on me in personal prophecy like that, real strong. And I, I prophesy more over nations and things now, but I'd say, I said, who is Buck? Some woman just jumped up and said, I just started work today for a man named Buck. And, and I, I, I told the whole thing. Well, the Lord told the whole thing. And he does that to let people know he's, he's, he's in your life. He's watching you. Because a man can't know these things. A man can't know these things. Only God knows these things. And sometimes he'll only tell pieces of it. And you know the rest of it. Because he won't embarrass you. We're standing in a meeting one night and, some, and the Lord said, there's somebody here. I said, I see something about witchcraft and a rubber chicken. <laughs> and, and, and just on and on about it. I thought, dear God, what is this? <laughs> and some, somebody stood up and they said, are you going to tell them or do we tell them? <laughs> so they finally stood up and said, there's a witch put a curse on us, and we get up, didn't they say we get up and find rubber chickens? And our chickens are dead. And just on and on, whatever it was. Well, the Lord fixed that. We were standing in a place one night in another place, and we was up there. And the Lord said, there's somebody in the room famous. He told me that before I ever got there. He said, there's somebody in the room famous for turning wrenches. Well, I got to the meeting, and I had written it down earlier that day in prayer. I got to the meeting, and I, I had my mechanic all picked out. <laughs> so I knew when I gave the word, he was going to come up here. He had his Mac cap on, whatever he had on. and You could tell. I mean, I had him. Well, that's him. So I said, the Lord said, you're famous for turning wrenches. Why don't you come up here? Well, he didn't even move. He just looked around. And in a few minutes, this lady come walking up. I'd have never picked her out. She said, yeah, it was like that Barbie under the hood. She said, it might be me. Said, I'm the first woman helicopter, a pilot, a helicopter mechanic decorated by the Army. I've been on Nightline. I've been on this. I've been on. The, I said, she said, that could be me. I said, you think? Famous for turning wrenches. <laughs> then one night we were in a meeting. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. But the Lord spoke. And he said he gave this whole prophecy earlier that day. And I, I read it in the meeting. And I said in some, and I read it this way. If I'm not mistaken, it went just about like this. And somebody will call and confirm it during this meeting that this is true. And the phone rang and somebody stood up and said, that was somebody from Texas just called me and said this. Said exactly what was in that book. Now who can know that but God? 
And today the Lord said he's going to, whenever the pastor's done with this and we receive this, then the Lord's going to minister in the altars. And you prepare your heart because God never intends on you to come to a service and leave the way you came. Never. See, I'm standing here already hearing something about Nancy and an ear problem. I said, well, who in the world is that? I don't know. But I heard that. That's you? Your name Nancy? And you have an ear problem? Well, there you go. <laughs> now, now you see that? Now, see, just like that, just put your hands on your ears. And in the name of Jesus, be made whole and completely whole of that ear problem in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, I hear the name Rutherford. Rutherford. What is that name? Who would name their kids Rutherford? Well, people do. It could be a last name. I don't know, but I, hear, I heard it. The Lord is looking to do something in people, but you have to recognize it. And a lot of times you'll hear something. It'll be so close to you, you don't realize what you heard. And you think, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, that's me. I heard that name. I heard Rutherford. My house is on Rutherford. Your house is on Rutherford. Is it you and your wife live there? Yeah, where's your wife? Right, right there? Okay, y'all live there alone now? But you don't have any kids living with you? You live there alone? Alone? Lift your, lift your hands up. You and your dog? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. The Lord said you set out in quest of your inheritance. You set out in quest of something that God said that he would give you. And you knew on the inside of your spirit that something was stirring. Well, welcome to the revolution, the Lord says. For if you think that you will not be used, you are wrong. For I will use you because your heart wants to be used. Listen close to me, says the Lord, and I am going to let you walk where your head is very soon from this day. So go ahead and rejoice and be glad things are going to work out great for you if you just do not turn. For the Lord said, I am with you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's just like I don't know who, I don't know who Timmy, Timmy or Tim or Timmy is, but the Lord is talking to them right now and about them. Who is that? Tim? That's your name, Tim? Lift your hands up, Tim. Hallelujah. For the Lord says these things to you, Tim. He said, I'm going to untangle thoughts in your thinking, in your mind. I'm going to untangle some thoughts because I'm going to let you see the divine. I'm going to let you see exactly what you want to see. For you, the enemy would love to just tangle up things and just knot it up and keep it away from you. But nay, says the Lord, because I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to start untangling things in your mind and bring you a great peace in your heart. And you will know that the peace came from me, says the Lord, and me alone and not anyone else. And you and I will know these things, says the king. Come on and give him praise and honor and glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Somebody had a ticket. I don't know if it was a ticket. I don't know if it's a, a canceled ticket, a, an airplane ticket. It's something in your pocket, something to do with the ticket. If, if, if you're in this room, you, need, you should acknowledge that for the Lord has a word for you right now. But I can't do anything else if someone won't speak. So you do that and the Lord wants people to, who is that? Who is that? Is that somebody? You? What's it? What is that, brother? D tell me what I'm seeing. Yeah, 
You have a ticket to go see your granddaughter at graduation. Your pocket. Stand up right there where you are, please. For the Lord says this ticket is symbolic to you. For I'm going to let you do more and go further and travel further than you've ever known before. I'm going to show you things in the spirit. Traveling in the natural, yes, but traveling in the spirit too. And I'm going to reveal things to you that you thought was not even real. But they are real and they're going to get more real to you. And you'll share the reality with others around you. Because I am planning on using you, says the Lord. And you are going to be the one to be used in all this situation. Now you're going to minister to your families. And you're going to be. You're going to be a testimony to your family because your family is stubborn. And you're, you're going to be a, a key to them. And, you, and they'll see me in you, says the Lord. So the ticket is your ticket in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. See, we thank the Lord. We give him praise and honor and glory and thanksgiving. So the Lord is going to minister in the altars here soon. Already he's begun. The prophetic word, words of knowledge, words, that's all prophetic. Gifts of the Spirit in operation. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor, and, and, and give us this. We need this. Hallelujah. I'm looking at it, but I don't want to read it because I want you to give it to us out of revelation. <laughs> and, and already, see, while she's beginning, as she was coming up here, somebody's spine is being straightened. God. How about that? You had, you had like a curvature in your spine, and the Lord's healing you right now. Is that you? Yeah, stand up. The Lord is healing you. See, I heard the, the Lord is just straightening the spine, the straightening the spine. I don't know how you, you'll know that, but just go ahead and if you take it by faith, then you can have that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah can be your spine. Amen. That's you. Hallelujah. Then you're healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I you can go back and watch or you can write uh, these uh, and they're from Exodus 23 but I wanted you to see uh, this morning the Lord uh, he's took us on such a journey but at this time when uh, the uh, the time of Passover I want you to keep this in mind that uh, the lamb that was that was taken was it first says for a house it was taken for a a house so that would put it in the realm of your family your your house and um let me get back to uh to where I was, I've, I've uh, here it says uh, in chapter 12, verse 3 says, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying in the tenth uh, day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house and house. And we know we have taken the lamb being Jesus into our house but it says uh, and if the household be too little for the lamb let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb uh, it, it talks about you can go on and it says to roast it all and eat every bite of it and we know the lamb is the lamb, the, the word of God, the lamb is Jesus. And you take it all, you eat it all, every bit of it. But in this time of Passover, and you can go back and read it, because I sense the Lord wants to get back in that, that, uh, that certain vein uh, of an altar ministry right now. But these are the blessings that are, are getting you to transition into this season. 
And uh, number one, it is divine protection. Now, you can find these out of, uh, uh, like I said, Exodus 23. Uh, divine protection. Number two, protection from enemies through positioning and alignment. Hallelujah. Protection from enemies through positioning and alignment. Number three, commissioning of divine authority. You know, Moses stood before Pharaoh and he said, let, for the, he, there came that one last time. He said, let my people go. Yes. And at that point in time, was when the death angel came through. And, and it wasn't, it, they had taken a lamb and they struck the doorpost with the blood. He said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. Supernatural health and kingdom prosperity. They were 400 years in bondage. 400 years, the Egyptians had stolen wealth from them that wasn't theirs. And in one night, their harvest came. And they took back everything the enemy had stolen from generations to generation to generation for 400 years. Supernatural health and king kingdom prosperity. Covenant protection for multiplication and longevity. When they left out of Egypt, there was not one sick among them. I don't care what the Ten Commandments movie says. They, nobody was hoisted on a, a stretcher and, and hauled across the Red Sea. They all walked across. Covenant protection for multiplication and longevity. Number six, a godly release of fear and respect from the enemy. A godly release of fear and respect from the enemies. When Pharaoh let them go, he said, bless me too. Read it. He said, bless me too. Number seven, relief from the threat of enemies. Relief from the threat of enemies. Number eight, the, dominion, the gift of dominion and an increased inheritance. A, the gift of dominion and an increased inheritance. And number nine, freedom from corrupt covenants. Freedom from corrupt covenants. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord gave us these. These are for a higher level, higher calling, higher level of protection, provision, health, and authority. And promotion and advancement for our calls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you wrote all that down. If you didn't, go back and watch. Um, I, I, I don't want to tarry on a lot of this right now because of the, the anointing that was, that was in manifestation right now. So let's just lift our hands and receive these nine blessings of the Passover that the Lord has for us this this week. Okay. Lord, right now, we receive divine protection. Lord, we receive divine protection. We receive promote protection from enemies through positioning and alignment. We receive the commissioning of divine authority. We receive supernatural health and kingdom prosperity. We receive covenant protection for multiplication and longevity. We receive a godly release of fear and respect from our enemies. 
We receive relief from the threat of enemies. We receive the gift of dominion and an increased inheritance. We receive freedom from corrupt covenants. We receive protection, provision, help, and authority, promotion, and advancement from the call of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He's just doing stuff. He's just doing stuff. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Let me read this prophecy before we start. This was given to me today. I guess this is the, is this the 21st? Yes. So it was given to me today. Robin and I were married 45 years yesterday, right? <laughs> On the 20th. That's how I knew it was the 21st. But we were married again 10 days later. And we have two marriage licenses and everything because her daddy wasn't there when we got married. <laughs> so he meant to be. So we had an attorney tell us one time, said he just, but it ain't even worth it. Said for y'all, y'all to even ever think about divorcing. You'd have to, I don't know if he's joking or he's serious, so you'd have to do it twice. <laughs> the Lord said these words around 9 a.m. this morning, April 21st, 2024. Said the turning of history looks different. It is a caveat of different things. It's a time, it's a time when, when loose ends of prophecy are gathered up. It is a time when men lose their minds. It's a time when rockets are launched for no apparent reason. It is a time of taking hold of the plow and not looking back. It is a time of gathering, not casting away. It is a time of seriousness, not a time to play. It is a time to think and not rethink your lives. It is a time to weep between the porch and the altar. It is a time to stand strong while others falter. It is a time to stand with Israel like never before. It is a time of the turning of history. Through the open door. It is the time I'm going to turn the page. Some, as I have said before through my prophet, will try to hang on to the edge of the page as it turns, but they will not be able to, and they will simply fall. Barack Obama will fall, and many others. Hold strong as the page turns, for this great ship of history is about to turn, says the Lord. Birds of the air in flight, fire birds of old lighting up the night. Intercessors intercepting things meant for harm. Do not be deceived by dictators' charms, for though it looks good, what some will offer, it is devastation in the end. But the original covenant made with your forefathers, I will begin a new thing, not an old, but a nation of freedom like refined gold. Do you care? In the sense of seriousness, yes. In the form of worry, nay. For I am in control of this because I was put in control of this. It seems out of control because wicked men 
wicked men that were put in control do not have my thoughts. But I speak of this nation and control, not Israel. For Israel is mine. I will determine its course. But America is yours to make your own choice. What do you have to, why, why do you have to guess about your support of my land? And why would, your, why would you side with those who come against my plan? I am dealing with the Antichrist regime at this time because you asked me to. Now stand with my people Israel, I'm asking you. Soon your time to decide on this choice will have passed. Decide, 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 says the Lord, for time is moving fast. History is going to turn, like it or not. So sow what you have or keep what you've got. Hallelujah. That was a word from the Lord. A prophetic word from the Lord. Given through the pen of a prophet. This came for the world, not just America. But America and Israel was spoken of. But that's the word the Lord had me to give as far as a prophetic utterance today. So we, we, we take heed to it. Yes? yes. Hallelujah. 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 Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. Let's lift our hands and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and thank Him. For God is not finished. You say, my, my, this is a long service. Yes. Yes, but it's not near as long as some devastating disease. And it's not nearly as long as a life of dis-ease. It's not nearly as long as financial woe. It's not nearly that long, says the Lord. So, Lord, we ask you now to move into this room and around the world through those cameras that are in place. Lord, I ask you to let the people sense your presence and even see your face. Lord, it is the time of gathering, not casting away. Lord, you told us that today. So gather them in, Lord, them, their families, their children, and their grandchildren. Gather them unto you, Lord, to convey your blessing upon them. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So be blessed, be blessed, be blessed with the blessing of the Lord today. And be blessed and healed and made whole as you go on your way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, I can. For that stomach ulcer that you suffer with is being healed right now by the Lord's mighty hand. For you thought it was something else. But an ulcer it surely is. But the Lord said, I'll not tolerate that in you. Why would he do such a thing? Because you're his. And he loves you with all his heart. For it's time for the world to see a loving God who will embrace you and call you to his self. Hallelujah. And it's like an old song said, don't take and put his love up on a shelf. For now he's going to take it down in this service and have you come as you need to come. And he's going to heal, save, deliver, and even baptize in the Holy Ghost Son. 
So whatever the need is today, move out of your seat and make your way to the front if you need to come. For the Lord would just bid you come by his love that he can hold you, speak to you, and bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus as Lord, you surely should come. Because all blessings come from him. All come from him. And every good gift. The scripture says every good gift cometh from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights. In whom is no variableness. Neither shadow of turning. He always does it that way. He's good. He's absolutely good. Yes, I will, Lord. I'll tell him. Now, there's somebody in this room. You may be in the altar by now. And you thought your sin was so great. You thought it was so great that you had to be punished before you could ever feel better. The Lord said, that's not true. That's a lie from hell. He bore your sickness. He carried your pain. And there is nothing you could have done nor thought. I'll tell them, Lord. Now, there's somebody standing here today, here, and I'm sure many watching by camera, that your thoughts torment you. You constantly think, how can I I keep thinking this way, running through my mind this way, and still be right with God. The Lord said, those are not your thoughts. That's the enemy dropping these thoughts in your head. But I know the intent of your heart, and the intent of your heart is, I don't want those thoughts. So the Lord said, let them go, and concentrate on me, and focus on me. Hallelujah. Now we're going to pray, start off praying this prayer first. For those who need it, everybody here may not need this, but we're going to do it in support of those. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and personal Savior. Live in my heart. Cleanse me of sin. Take my life and do something with it. Whatever I am, I give it to you. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, Frank. Frank. God loves you. And he loves you. And he hasn't forgotten Frank. He hasn't forgotten. Somebody standing in here has a drunk father. And you think that it could never be right. The Lord said, I'm going to turn his whole life around. And you'll know that I did it tonight. Hallelujah. Frank. Who else is Frank? Is this the Frank? The Lord says this to you. I am going to take the pieces... And I'm going to put them all back together now. But I'm going to put them back together with the glue of Calvary. And the glue of Calvary will never let them be pulled apart again. You will love again. You will know again. You will have life again. For all these pieces are going to be put back together, says the Lord. And it's not going to be an old thing made new. It'll be a new thing altogether. And this thing is going to be a joyful spot in your life. And you're going to even get light in your toes and feet. And you'll start to bounce again. 
and you'll start to talk again because you've been speaking my word when you didn't feel like speaking my word. The Lord said, you're going to feel like speaking my word and you're going to do it with great joy, says the Lord. And I'm going to show your son, I'm going to show your family that I have put it all back together again and I will put it together for them and for you, says the Lord, and you are going to know it was done because you heard it this day from heaven. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I saw somebody's pancreas being put back together. Somebody's pancreas. Who is that? Somebody's pancreas that needs put together. That's you. It's going. I saw a pancreas being put back together. I saw yours being put together. That it was going to be strengthened again. It'll be used again. It'll not fall short again to do what it's supposed to do, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive it. Hallelujah. Come on and just lift your hands all over the house and bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. This is a strange word, but somebody has a spot on their rib. It's a spot. I don't know if it's inside, outside. It's like a spot on your rib. It's, it's, I don't know if it came from an injury. I don't know what it came from, but I saw this spot. And your rib, what is your name? Stephen. Stephen. Lift both hands, Stephen. Is this the only one? Has a, has a spot in her rib? Is that the only you? Nobody knows about? Okay, lift your hand. Who else? Now that's a strange word. I've never heard this word in my whole life, a spot on someone's rib. That's you? Who would have guessed? Okay, everyone with a spot on your rib that that word fits, stand up right now, lift your hands up. Everybody else can put yours down and so that we can see their hands. We're going to pray and we're going to release this, the healing power of the word. Hallelujah. Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus, I stand on Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Lord. Your word that, that the whole foundation of the world is made from. Everything in creation comes from your word, Lord. And in the name of Jesus, surely you have bore their griefs and carried their sorrows, their sickness and their pain. Yet they did esteem you stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But you were wounded for their transgressions. You were bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain their peace was upon you. And with your stripes, they are healed and made whole. Now be made whole. You sit your word, Lord, Psalm 107, 20, and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Someone's got a, a, a growth or something behind your ear. I don't know who that is. I saw a spot behind your ear. I don't know what kind of spot it is. Who is that? That's you? A spot behind your ear. Keep your finger on it. In the name of Jesus, I stand right now on Psalm 107, 20, that you sent your word and healed him and delivered him from his destruction. In Jesus' name. Someone in this room has a melanoma. I curse that thing to begin to wither in your life. It's a melanoma, and I command that dark thing to go away in your life. In the name of Jesus, the name above all names. Now, who is that in the room that you have a, a, a growth in your sinuses? It's in your sinus that's you. And there, stand up, and it's you. In your sinuses, lift both hands up. In the name of Jesus, and I order that swelling in whoever's throat. Like a, that you, like, I saw you do that, but I didn't know that was you. Who else is that in your throat? Here, you. It comes up. Yes. Yes. 
keep your hands up. Because when I pray for this lady, then I want you to receive your healing all over the house. Whoever has that growth, receive your healing all over the house. And whoever has deal, dealings with what used to be called a gorder. Who is that? Used to be called a gorder. Does that make sense to you? Yes? Lift your hands up. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, can I lay my hand on your head? Is that all right? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth right now, I minister health and healing to everyone who has their hand up for this right now. I command that swelling. Frank, run down here and help me. In the name of Jesus, use your faith. Use your faith. Use your faith. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command those, that growth in the sinuses and the gorders in their throat and the swelling of the glands, anything like that, Lord God, that's connected, yes, Lord, and that bubbling and, and, and bronting, bubbling in their ears, I command that to go now from her in Jesus' name. And you receive, receive that now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a wave of the glory that wants to come over on this section all the way through to here all on this corner up in there right in here I want you to lift your hands up if you think you may fall somebody stand close hallelujah hallelujah and in the name of Jesus if you want that I release that over you now in the name of Jesus. Receive, receive, receive. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Things have begun today in your bodies. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The time of the turning of history. History is huge. And the Lord's going to turn it today. It's beginning its turn now. And he absolutely wants the best for you. Some of you go to a dead church and you think you're called there because you think you're going to turn it around. Well, you're not because you're not their Savior. And they reject him, you are already rejected. Move where there's life and don't be left behind off this wave because it's rising and swelling among the body of Christ right now. There's going to be miracles that will stagger the human mind, will start showing up all over the body of Christ, everywhere. It's going to be in such a way you're going to hear of preachers you've never heard of before suddenly standing up and having meetings that you've never heard of them before and they're packed out places because the Holy Ghost is moving. And He's going to use imperfect vessels. And He'll bring the perfect into the imperfect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear that tune change all at once? Something changed. Hear that? That's God's love song to you. Your mother, Ruby, did make it to heaven. And you didn't know. But she did. <laughs> and 
Butch and Barry? They did too. For there's a line of people that no one gave a chance to. They whispered my name just before they left this world and asked for help and mercy and received me so I came and an angel carried them away. And they're with me today. So rejoice. Some you thought would never be here are here by choice. They never forgot the words you told them. Though you thought it fell on deaf ears, it did not and they remembered oh they remembered they remembered in the moment in the last breath they got yes they remembered Ted <laughs> and Fred it's not over till it's over hallelujah now whatever ailment you may have in your body right now let's let the Lord have his way here it don't matter if I called that it don't make any difference if I did or I didn't the fact that he said come is proof enough he had you on his mind so whatever that may be, why don't you lift your hands right now if you need healing in your body. Let the Holy Ghost blow across your life and receive healing even without a surgical knife. God is here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hear a name. I, I'm saying this wrong, but I just don't know how else to say it because I'm not used to hearing it. And so I say what, I, what it sounds like to me. I want you to know that before I say it. It's like I heard a name... Barkus. Now that's not right, I know, but I don't know how it's to say that. And somebody in here could tell me what I'm saying. It's like I said, Garrett, Garrett, Garrett. I never heard the name Garon, Garon. So I just said that. It's like a, a bar, Barkus. Barkas. If that means something to you, we should, I should, I need to know that. Huh? Somebody will have to spell that to me. That means that registers Barkas or to you? He's in heaven now. Really? Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Well, let's bless the Lord all over the house. Is that, is that the only one? I don't like to move until everybody's Marcus, but I know that name, but take it anyway. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Well, I will. Uh, somebody's referred to yourself as having an Achilles heel. I don't know exactly what that is, but you if that's you, I need to see your hand. Now, the moment it stops, it'll stop. Huh? An Achilles tendon. Is that what that's known? Is that what that's called? An Achilles heel. <laughs> Lift your hands up. Lord, right now we send the power of God to her. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord God. Touch her life completely with your presence healing from the top of her head to the soles of her feet in Jesus name I can't see you do do you have a son you do what's his name how old is he mm-hmm How's he doing? Lift your hands up. His first name is what again? Cody. Cody. Lord God, we send the word of God to Cody. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, that absolutely that you will speak to him in a way that only he knows and you know that it's him. And that it's you. You know everything about him. And Lord God, he knows little about you, yet he knows some things. And Lord God, I ask you to heal the hurt in Cody's life that has pushed him from you. The Lord God, the ideas that has that pushed him away from you. I saw this in his life that he saw there's something happened and there's something that turned him kind of in his thinking that he thought it should have been another way. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes, you're shaking your head, yes. Well, right now in the name of Jesus, you tell him what happened today. Tell him what happened today and that the Lord said that wasn't him that did that. That wasn't God that did that. That had nothing to do with God when that happened. But the Lord has got Cody on his mind to give him the life he's always desired to have. Hallelujah. Does all that make sense to you? Yes. Hallelujah. Lift up both of your hands then. Bless them, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. Shalom, shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken in their lives. In Jesus' name. Now I hear the name Manchester. Manchester. The Lord spoke that name to me. A, a Manchester. It's been a while since the Lord has used me in, in personal prophecy. My husband and I drove here from Manchester. You drove here from Manchester. <laughs> That's good. The, Really? Well, come and join hands then. Hallelujah. Now, I heard the Lord say this. I heard the Lord say this about you. The Lord says that you have a great hunger for Him and that your hunger has grown and things have been corrected in your life along because you hungered for Him more. And so the Lord showed you how to do things and how to grow and how to do, and you did a lot of workarounds. 
because you didn't have the money to do a lot of things, so you did a lot of workarounds. I got a picture of two red weenies. <laughs> and so you did a lot of workarounds, but the Lord says this. I was with you. I saw all of it. I've never forgotten one praise out of one hand you've ever raised. I've never forgotten any of that, says the Lord. And so you go ahead and go in full confidence that the Lord ain't nearly finished with you yet. Just do what he says to do, and he'll do the rest. But be real wise and, 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 and don't say a lot when he tells you don't talk. But then speak when he tells you to. Because he's planning on turning other lives around. And they need to hear things just right. And you need to learn to hear him just right. So it's going to be a journey. You're going to like it. And you'll have fun at it. But the Lord's going to grant you answers to your prayers and promises fulfilled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know a Kim, do you? Do you know it? You have a cousin named Kim? Kim don't live for the Lord? No. Now, is, is, is Kim married or divorced or twice? Do you know? I know that she dated a man for a while. Kind of stacked up, I think. Yeah, up on the hill thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't know if she's ever married or not? I saw two relationships in her life. Do you know of those? No, but you know of one? But her name is Kim. She has no, does she have a child? No. no. Um, her brother has a child that she kind of uh, takes on as, as hers. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, let's just, how old is Kim? Just around about. Okay. I started to say in her 20s. All right, lift your hands up then for Kim. We need to, we need to. And there's a Rhonda. That's your mom, Rhonda? Right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I ask you to breathe on Kim. Lord, show her that your relationship with her is far more fulfilling than what she's hunting. For the Lord said, Kim is hunting for a satisfaction. She's hunting for something that she didn't have. And she's hunting for something that was never shown to her. She was hunting for something, and this is why father figures get so big in her life. She's hunting for something. But the Lord said, I am her something. You tell her that today. And you tell her the supernatural way this came about. Yes. I had no way of knowing Manchester. No. I had no way of knowing you had a spot behind your ear. No, it's, I, it's relieved. I, it's relieved now. Yeah, I couldn't wear my sleep apnea mask because of it hurting last night and there's no pain. It could, I couldn't even touch it. Lord, God is good. He's absolutely good. You, you need to tell her that. Tell her the whole thing, but then get to the point about her. Yes. And the Lord said, he is her fulfillment. Yes. Amen. Yes. And then I saw a life ahead of her. I saw a life. I saw a child. I saw a husband. I saw everything. Yes. That's what's waiting. Amen. I would tell her. Be happy for her yes. Amen. when it happens. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Who was Rusty to you? He was my best friend. 
he was my best friend and he passed away we were best friends since high school and he passed away when we were about 35 and I said Lord I was lost when he died so I couldn't witness to him and now I don't know as far as I know he was lost and I said Lord I don't know if it's even appropriate or acceptable or okay to pray this but I'm gonna pray since you know the end from the beginning you knew that someday I would pray this so I'm praying it now I'm asking you to take this prayer back in time and to honor it at the time of his passing God save him I don't want my friend to die lost and I didn't know if it was even okay to pray that and I prayed Lord Lord and I I started feeling some peace on it but I thought this is just my flesh just hearing what I want and on the 11th hour you I called out and I felt God honored, honored my prayer. You know, you you don't know before somebody takes their last breath to. You don't know what they don't even pretend to know. Because you don't know. You're going to get to heaven and you're going to see a line of people you thought, wait a minute, they made it. <laughs> and you know what? Those line of people may look at you and say, you mean they made it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. But but your mother is who? Rhonda. Did you hear that testimony about Rusty? Tell that to Rhonda. That she didn't know if Rusty made it to heaven. That's going to mean something to Rhonda about somebody. And the Lord tell her, said, tell her, yes, they did. Hallelujah. Because she's a believer, right? Yeah. So you, you, I, I, have I ministered to you before about your mother? Oh, really? Well, that's how I knew that then. But you tell her that. And it's something how God will do these things. And, and there's some people... <laughs> There's some people in this room right now, you, you, don't, you don't think God is going to use you, but He is. He's going to use you. What could price could you put on one soul that you mentioned Jesus to one time and they didn't go to hell because they remembered what you said to them? Now do you know why heaven angels say, Listen at them. They're talking about Jesus. They're talking about God. Because one mention of that name can stay with somebody forever. Hallelujah. Now I heard this. I don't know how much longer he'll let, let us keep flowing in this, but I heard something about a brain tumor. I don't know if that's been diagnosed or are you you're thinking that's what that is because someone else that happened to him. But the Lord needs to minister to you right now. He wants to. Who, who is that? And people are watching around the world and I'm sure they're on camera that saying, that's me, that's me. But there's somebody here. You could encourage others' faith by acknowledging that. On her brain? What is her name? Rita. Rita. Who is Catherine? Who? Where? That's Catherine? Catherine, lift up both hands. Catherine, are you a preacher? You are? Yes, the Lord said you were a preacher. Lord, fill her mouth with fire from heaven. Fill her pulpit with fire from heaven. Wherever that pulpit may be, wherever it ends up, Lord, wherever it goes, fill her mouth with fire and her pulpit with fire that her nephews be born again 
that people come in from all around her born again. And Lord God, that they will absolutely sense the heat from the fire of heaven when she opens her mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> How about that, Catherine? Hallelujah. You got a nephew? You got a nephew? And you've been believing for his salvation. Well, there it was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, before we pray for Rita and this brain thing, Yeah. On his brain. What's his name? Bazan. Okay, stand right there. And, and we know Rita. Okay, who is it now? Uh, now, this is something that it's a fear. There's someone in here, you have a fear of that. Would really... The Lord would really like to minister to you. Over here, just stand where you are. That's, that'll be fine. And just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Now to start with, the Lord says these things to you. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. But you say, I haven't seen a lot of power in a long time in my life. The Lord said, it's because fear came to shut the door before you could view the power. But the Lord says this, today we're going to jerk the door open so you can see the end from the beginning. And you can see your destiny and your long life that lays ahead of you. For the Lord has given you a plan and he's given a plan that he knows that he's going to reveal to you. And on your plan is a future. And in your future is a destiny. And in your destiny is power and love and a sound mind and a joyful heart again. Should you receive it, the Lord said, it's yours now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> All of that bear witness with you? Yes. Praise God. Praise God. Now that pain in the pit of your stomach, right in the middle of your stomach, whoever that is, God's healing that. He's healing that. It's just a pain right in the middle. And it's not just, it's just keeps doing that. Well, God's healing that now. I want you to listen. He's healing diverticulitis. He's healing that right now. I, I see bacteria dissolving. Just dissolving away. And your stomach being healed. Hallelujah. Why did the Lord do this today? I don't know. When we first started the service, he said, I'm going to minister in the altars today. Hallelujah. Ma'am, did you come for something special? You a minister? Really? Never thought about that, huh? In your whole life. Do you teach or anything like that? You sure you want everything he wants for you? <laughs> well, lift your hands up then. Now, here's what I heard the Lord say to you. And you stop me at any time if this is wrong. The Lord said, now, said you, because it is his will that you and him are going to get rid of depression in your life. Is that right? Yes. And it is a very real thing. 
This is not something that people would call psychosomatic. This is a very real thing. But the Lord said he's going to get rid of that. You and him together are going to get rid of this forever. And he's going to give you words to speak. No matter what you call it, you're still going to be speaking his word. And you'll make a difference in lives around you. And people are going to see the joy that you have that you didn't have before. People that knew. Because this is what I hear now. You, didn't, you don't have a whole lot to be happy about. There's a lot of things in your life that has transpired over your life. This is true, is it not? But the Lord says this. I'm going to mend things. And he said, when I mend it, it can't be broken again. But don't go ahead and draw a preconceived idea of the way this mending will look, because, but it's still going to be mended. And there's going to be people that have a love for you that you wanted to. And they'll look back at you with great respect. Does that all make sense to you? Because he ain't told me what it is. So right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we break this depression off of this dear sister. We break it now from her life. And Lord God, send the light of God into her very soul and her mind, her will, and her emotions. Lord, and I ask you, and just symbolically, dear sister, just take his hand and like that and say, you and me will break this depression forever. Say, I receive the joy of the Lord in my life. I receive the respect again. And you know who it's from, so you just say it to him. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Isn't God good today? Now we're going to pray for Rita. We're going to pray for Danny. And we're going to pray right now. We're, just, we're going to pray the prayer of faith. You know, the Bible said the prayer of faith will save the sick. It said they'll anoint them with oil in the prayer of faith, the elders and, and all. But we're going to symbolically do that because they're not right here. And we don't have the elders exactly there. So you know what I'm going to do? This is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to get Tina to come. Tina, come up here. And, and I need some of your, your prayer elders that will come with you. And I want you to come up here, sir, and you, ma'am. Uh, and y'all come and stand right here in front of these. These are elders. Do we, do we have some oil here handy? Um, bring me some oil. Hallelujah. If you look on my desk, I got plenty. And, and we're going to pray now. If there's somebody else in here that you're dealing with, a, with I don't, I, I, it was like a brain tumor or a spot on the brain or something. You need to come. Here's some more. Give it to Tina. You need to come because the elders here are going to anoint you with oil and pray the prayer of faith. And the scripture says, and the Lord will raise them up. And if they've committed any sin, it'll be forgiven them. That means if you think that sin has caused this thing in whoever's life, it's going to be forgiven them. So that's not going to be the hindering factor anymore. How many of you can agree with us on this prayer right here? So stretch your hands this way. And Miss Tina, you just take your liberty. Yeah, it's him. This is for Rita, his, his, your mother, and for Danny. Is that your son? And, 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 and for herself. And what is your name? Carrie. And it's for her. Okay? Y'all just take your liberty and pray. Hallelujah. So anoint them with oil. Here comes another... If, if, if y'all see somebody coming, if you'll just take maybe a step back and let them up, the Lord will, will. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Yes, come and stand right up here by her. There you go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid. The Lord your God is here. He's with you today. Your life is just beginning. Brand new. Yes, oh yes. He is talking to you. Those on the other side of that camera. In the name of Jesus, you have, you tune in week after week. And all of this, a lot of these things pertain to you. Stretch your hands this way. Lord, I pray that every prayer, every relief.